Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at computing the weighted average number of shares outstanding and recomputing EPS. This topic is covered in intermediate accounting. I'm going to be working a quasi CPA simulation. Now, although I'm going to be I'm going to be working an exercise, I highly doubt it that you will see that type of exercise, that comprehensive exercise on the CPA exam. I'll be shocked if you do because it's going to be a little bit more complicated. It's going to take some time to complete. But nevertheless, if you understand it, if you can follow the steps, then you should be able to easily compute the weighted average number of shares outstanding and compute EPS. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where I house my 1,500 plus accounting, auditing, finance, and tax lecture. This is a list of all my resources or of all the courses on my website. You will have additional resources such as PowerPoint slides, true, false, multiple choice, 2,000 plus CPA questions if you're studying for your CPA exam. So let's go ahead and take a look at this exercise. On January 1st, 2018, Will Corporation had 480,000 shares outstanding. This is at the beginning of the year. During 2018, it had the following transaction that affect common stock. February 1st, they issued 120 shares. March 1st, they issued a stock dividend of 10%. May 1st, they acquired 100,000 shares. June 1st, they issued 341 stock split. October 1st, they reissued 60,000 shares. Question 1. Determine the weighted average number of shares outstanding as of December 31st, 2018. So here you have to know how this is going to work. So I'm going to walk, walk you through it real quick with a shorthand co computation. Then we would look at the Excel sheet. You started the year with 480,000 shares. This is this number right here. Then you, you had those shares outstanding until February 1st. So... On February 1st, you issued 120,000 shares. Now you have 600,000 shares. So, so this is 1-1, one, one, this is 1-1, one, one, and this is uh, uh, February 1st. This is what happened February 1st. From 1-1 one, one till February 1st, you had 480. Now starting February 1st, you had 600,000 shares. And you had 600,000 shares until March 1st, where you issued 10% stock dividend. What does it mean you issued 10% stock dividend? It means 10% of 600,000, that's plus 60,000. Now you have 660,000 shares, because 10% of 600,000 is 60%. So this is the stock dividend. This is the 10% stock dividend, 10%. Then what happened next, May 1st, you acquired 100,000 shares. What does it mean acquired? It means you bought back 100 treasury stocks. You have to deduct 100,000 shares. We're down to 560. So starting, June 1st, uh, starting May 1st, you had 560,000 shares. June 1st, we had 3 for 1 stock split. What does it mean you had 3 for 1? It means... Those shares, the 560, were tripled. You gotta multiply them by, multiply them by three. And now we're up to 1,680,000 shares. Now remember, once we have a stock split or a stock dividend, the stock split and the stock dividend will have to apply to all the other shares, which we're gonna go back and do the, uh, do the computation for that, okay? So 1,680,000. Then, October 1st, you reissued. You sold again 60,000 shares. You end up with 1,740,000 number of shares. Now, remember, we have to know, we have to weigh them. Now, this is what happened. So, this is this. Basically, I took this information and showed you how to analyze it. 480 plus 120, 600,000. Then, we added the 10% stock dividend. Okay? Then, we deducted 100,000 for the shares that we required, then we multiply the outstanding shares by three, then we added 60,000 shares. Now we need to take all these shares and weigh them. So let's go to the Excel sheet and we'll, we'll weigh them properly and making sure the stock dividend and the stock split applies to all previous dates as of the beginning of the year. Okay. Let's take a look at this Excel sheet starting the beginning the beginning uh, balance, the beginning balance, if you remember, we had 480,000 shares from January 1st till February 1st. That fraction of the year is 112 for one month because they went from January 1st till February 1st until we issued new shares. I like to use the percentage 
uh, those shares were outstanding 112 of the year which is let me just 8.33 percent now we have to remember those shares they're gonna have to have a stock split and they're gonna have to apply a stock dividend they're gonna be a 10 percent stock dividend and three for one stock split what does that mean it means i'm gonna take 480,000 shares times times 8.33 percent times increase it by 1.1 then increase it by three because the the 1.1 is this is the 10 percent stock dividend then i increase it the stock split by three so the weighted average of those 480,000 shares is 132. remember i had to go back and adjust it for the stock split and adjust it for the stock dividend now the second event went from february 1st till march 1st i issued 100 i issued 120,000 shares which is i had 480 plus I issued 120,000 shares and those were outstanding also for one month 112 that's also 8.33 percent and those are also subject to the stock dividend and stock split what does that mean it means I have 600,000 shares times 8.33 weigh them then I have to multiply them by 1.1 because the stock the stock uh, dividend applied to them as well as the stock split because the, the stock dividend took place the stock dividend took place uh, let's, see, let's see when did it took place the stock dividend took place March 1st so anything before March 1st will have to have the stock dividend therefore the stock dividend would apply to them okay March 1st now then we had the stock dividend from then on March 1st we had a stock dividend what does that mean it means from March till May we had the stock dividend therefore we have to add we have to add we have to add six ten percent to those shares times 1.1 660 and that went from March 1st till May 1st and that's 212 and percentage wise that is 17 percent 16.667 now these shares they're already adjusted for the stocks for the stock dividend all we need to adjust them for is the stock split so we're going to have to multiply it by three therefore 600,000 times the time they were outstanding times the stock split that's 330,000 now on May 1st from May on May 1st we had it's me on May 1st we reacquired some shares May 1st till June 1st that's the next event we reacquired 100,000 shares it means we have to deduct 100,000 shares okay 560 and June May 1st till June 1st that's May that's it one month of the year one month of the year 112 that's 8.33 percent those are subject to the stock the stock split because they took place before the stock split therefore we have to adjust them by three it means we have to do to take 560 times 112 times 3 that's the weighted average whoops that's too too big of a number what did I do so we have to take 560 times 8.33 times 3 that's 140,000 shares now we had the stock split and that took place June June to October then in October we we had a we reissued some shares well it means we have to take all the shares here we have to take all the shares multiply them by three okay and those were outstanding from june till october which is 412 that's percentage wise 33 percent of the year which is 33.33 those are already adjusted for the stock split already adjusted for the stock dividend it means we're gonna we're gonna take them one million six hundred and eighty thousand times the fraction of the year those are been properly adjusted for both then from October 1st till December 31st the last event is we reissued 60,000 new shares so let's go back and take the previous plus 60,000 new shares and the, the, those were outstanding for 312 of the year and that's equal to percentage wise equal to 25% they've already been adjusted for stock dividend and stock split 
we'll take the number of shares outstanding times the percentage you are outstanding for the year now we can sum the weighted average number of shares let's sum them 1 million 762 so this is the weighted average number of shares outstanding now make sure you add this up if you have time on your exam to make sure they add up to 100 percent and it does add up to 100 percent now the first thing we're going to compute is compute the let's see what we're, what we're being asked to do determine uh assuming net income is three million four hundred and fifty six in addition it had one hundred thousand shares let's take a look at what we have here <coughs> that's net income in addition it has one hundred thousand nine percent one hundred dollar non-convertible non-cumulative preferred outstanding for the entire year because of liquidity consideration however the company did not declare dividend and pay preferred dividend in 2018. what does that mean this tells us that those shares were non-cumulative and the company and the company did not declare the dividend if they're non-cumulative and the company did not declare the dividend we have no we have no preferred dividend to deduct what does that mean it means we can go back and compute uh, we can compute EPS earnings per share by taking net income dividing net income by the weighted average number of shares outstanding and we find out that EPS is dollar dollar ninety six dollar ninety six let's look at C assume the same fact in part B except that the preferred was cumulative cumulative means we have to deduct the preferred dividend how much preferred dividend do we have well it's a nine percent one hundred dollar power value it means we have to pay nine dollars per share and we have one hundred thousand shares it means we have to deduct from the numerator now nine hundred thousand dollar for the preferred for the preferred let's go back now to compute earnings per share under this scenario to compute earnings per share assuming that the preferred is dividend we're going to take net income uh, yeah we're going to take net income minus uh, 100,000 shares times nine dollars because each one of them gets nine dollars which is going to give us nine hundred thousand divide this by the weighted average number of shares outstanding simply put the numerator change what we did now is from the numerator we deducted nine hundred thousand dollar and this is going to give us so what did I do wrong with the formula let me just oops EPS equal to net income minus 100,000 times 9 close parentheses divided by this number let me close this here so we'll do the numerator first okay why is it not okay let's do the numerator first let's compute the income net income minus preferred dividend let me just make sure we do this so three million five hundred and forty six thousand minus nine hundred thousand and now we can compute eps now we deducted the dividend so net income divided by the common shares outstanding eps becomes dollar forty five dollar forty five okay this is assuming that we have to assume that we have a preferred dividend because we don't assume they told us the dividend is the dividend is cumulative therefore we have to deduct it okay assume the same fact in part b part b where it's we we didn't have to we did not have to deduct the dividend um except that net income included a loss from discontinued operation of four hundred and thirty two thousand okay what does that mean it means we're going to go back and work with this scenario here okay now we, we don't have to worry about the preferred dividend let me block this because we don't have to worry about the preferred dividend scenario okay they're told us there is a loss in net income there is a loss of four hundred and thirty two thousand that's from this continued operation so what does that mean here you have to understand what you are giving you are told basically you are told let me get the 10 here you are told that net income net income which is three million four hundred and fifty six thousand before we got the net income there was a loss 
there was a loss and that loss was 432,000 there was a loss from this continued operation what does that mean it means income from continuing operation now we add those two income from continuing operation is 3 million 888,000 okay because what we had we had income from continuing this much then we deducted this continued operation then we got to net income so this is net income okay now we now we're gonna have to compute EPS from EPS from continuing operation it means we have to take three million eight hundred and eighty eight thousand divided by one million seven hundred sixty two thousand shares so this is EPS from continuing continuing operation this is EPS from continuing operation and that's going to give us 2.21 now we have to compute EPS from this continued operation which is a loss 432,000 divided by 1,762,000 which going to give us 0.25 which is negative then obviously 2.21 minus 0.25 that's going to give us 1.96 and we can we can double check that because if we take three million four hundred and fifty six thousand divided by one million seven hundred and sixty two thousand that's going to give us one point nine six so we have to compute EPS from continuing operation we have to compute EPS from this continuing operation and this minus this will give you EPS overall EPS now as investors inv investors will focus on this EPS they will focus on e EPS from continuing operation because that's what we matter that's what's gonna stay with the company net income from continuing operation so hopefully this exercise is a really really good exercise for computing the weighted average number of shares outstanding also shows you the effect of cumulative versus non cumulative preferred and it compute EPS if you want additional exercises I strongly suggest you do is um, you can visit my website um, if you're studying for your CPA exam if you're studying for your CPA exam I strongly encourage you to subscribe as you will have access to more resources you study for your exam once make sure you have all the resources to succeed good luck study hard like the video share them put them in playlist 